I have been playing with this microscope for few days and I have decided to do a review. It comes with a metal stand, charger and USB cable. The stand looks like it's cast and not machined and it's quite heavy for its size. The holder screws into the base and there is black lock nut that is used to lock it from rotating and undoing itself. There are also two metal screws that are used to lock the microscope in position and prevent it from rotating the stand. The screws have blue plastic to prevent damage to the plastic casing of microscope. The stand also has four black rubber feet on bottom to prevent it from sliding around on table. The ring that holds the microscope is around 2.4 mm in thickness and the base is around 5.5 mm in thickness. The microscope itself has six buttons and a focus knob that's used to adjust the focus or the zoom and a 7 inch display. The display is around 1024 x 600 pixels. There are also 8 LEDs on the bottom that are used to light up the object that you are looking at. The plastic cover that is used to diffuse the light is also removable. On a side you can find the slider for adjusting the LED brightness, micro SD card slot and USB connector. Microscope fits nicely into the stand and then you can tighten those two screws to prevent it from rotating. Do not over tighten them so you don't damage the plastic housing. You can also tilt the microscope to adjust the viewing angle but you have to hold the bottom of the stand otherwise it will fall down. You can turn it on by holding the power button or plugging in the USB cable. After that, just adjust the height and focus until the image gets sharp. Here you can see 1 mm mark on precision sliding caliper. This is at the maximum zoom level and the zoom is around 50 times. Here is the 4 x 4 mm QFN32 IC at the maximum zoom level. The pin pitch is around 0.4 mm and there is no solder mask in between pins. This is the 0805 SMD LED from my TV Big Home. As you can see it's really sharp and clear. Here are the options from the menu. The HDR1 basically does nothing in my opinion. You can leave it on or off, the image on the screen will always be the same. I don't know about the recorded image because they suck and I'm not planning to do recording on this microscope. The video recording is a little bit better than the photos, photos are awful. The JPEG compression is really high. The power supply that came with it claims to output 2 amps at 5 volts, which I don't believe it's going to happen, it's probably like 1 amp because when we take a look inside, you will know the reason why. The USB cable is not the really good quality. Plugging it in and out quite often in the microscope will probably ruin it really fast because it's quite tight in there. So I suggest to keep it connected to the microscope all the time and just unplug the USB A part. To open the power supply, you can use flathead screwdriver. I'm really trying not to pierce my fingers right there. The build quality is not amazing, but I like that they've kept insulation distance. It's around 3.5 mm, which is not great, but it's better anything than nothing. The main switching IC has no markings on it, it looks like they scraped them off. 
Also they put a fuse, that's a big plus. To open the microscope you need to remove 9 screws and I suggest to keep the light diffuser on to protect the LEDs and the lens. I will spare you undoing the bolts. After undoing all the bolts, turn the microscope around and pull it for the fo focusing knob. The top cover should come apart. Just to know, have some scotch tape near nearby because the sealer buttons will be pain in the ass to put back together. When reassembling, just put them back in top cover and use scotch tape from the outside to hold them in position. Let's first disconnect the battery so we don't damage any other electronics. Then we can remove the display. To remove the display, just unplug the flat flex cable from the FFC connector. Now let's remove the main board. It has three screws holding it in on the top right corner and on the bottom. When lifting up the PCB, be careful, you need to unplug the wires going to the LEDs and unplug the flat flex cable for the camera sensor. In order to remove the optical assembly, you need to remove the two screws that are holding it pinched for the case. Now just slide it out. While turning the focus knob, you are basically adjusting the distance between the lens and the sensor. In my case, there is one more screw to remove in order to take apart the optical assembly. After the removing the last screw, you can just pull apart the assembly and you just be careful not to damage the sensor. The image sensor is quite small with few passes around it. Here you can take a better look at the main lens. Mine one is scratched from the factory, but it does not affect the image. When putting it back together, just be careful about the orientation of the cable for the LEDs. Here is a closer look at the LEDs. The display is probably using 24-bit RGB display parallel interface. I'm not sure about the camera, but it might use camera serial interface. Uh, I, do, I don't know what I see is this. It's probably built for this purpose. On the left we have potentiometer that's used for adjusting the brightness of the LEDs. There is also micro SD card socket, reset button, USB port for charging, and battery connector. Battery also has its own IC for charging, which the G600 did not have. There's also a resistor on the right that's used to set the charging current. USB can also be used with PC. You can see data lines right there, but I'm not sure it can do anything else than just display the SD card as mass storage. On the other side of the board, there are also two SMD LEDs. One is used to indicate the charging and it's red, and the other one is blue that slides up when the unit is powered on. Here is the lithium polymer battery, and be sure to have the fire extinguishing liquid next to you in order if something goes wrong. Joke aside, let's talk about the battery. The battery is quite thick. It's 3 amp hour, 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery. Here you can also scan the QR code if you want. The battery has its own protection circuit and let's see the dimensions of it. Thickness is around 10 millimeters, width is around 46 millimeters and the height is around 54 millimeters. 
you can fit the 12 millimeter stick battery up to 50 times 65 millimeters in dimension. Now let's compare the image from microscope and from the LCD. Honestly, I can say that the image from the LCD is amazing for the price, but the quality of the images on the SD card is awful because they are heavily JPEG compressed. Video quality is acceptable, but the file size is big because there is no MPEG encoding. File format is small and I recommend you to do the compression after copying the file to the PC. That's it for the review. See you in next video. Cheers.